sorry I didn't get to say goodnight, but um, you were asleep when I got up here. Well, I thought that you'd want to be alone with Laura for a little while, so I just went to bed. <clears throat> Laura wasn't even home when you came up here last night. Ah, uh, that's true. I heard her come in shortly after. And I just figured that you'd want to have a little mother-daughter chat with her. So I put my tuxedo back into mothballs, and I turned in. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel so guilty about ruining your lovely sentimental evening. That was such a dear idea to celebrate our second month anniversary. Come on, don't be silly. You didn't ruin anything. The best laid plans, you know. Well, I was disappointed. I'd like to think you were. Well, for what it's worth, I was. But we'll have other anniversaries. As a matter of fact, we got another one coming up in three weeks. It's a short month, remember? Thank you for understanding. You did know that it was purely a matter of priority. Come on, Leslie. It's over. So you don't have to make an issue out of it. Okay, I just want to say this one thing. Okay, go ahead. If you hadn't been that understanding... Mm -hmm. Come on in here. You wouldn't be the man I love. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, it's okay, and it works both ways. If you hadn't wanted to talk to Laura and find out what happened between her and Scotty... You wouldn't be the girl I love. So how did it come out? Didn't. You mean I came up here all alone for nothing? You two didn't even talk? When she got home, she said she was just too upset to talk about it. And I could see that she really was, so I didn't push it. I think you made a wise decision. Maybe I'm learning. <laughs> you know, even though we didn't talk, there was, um, there was a feeling of closeness. Do you know what I mean? I sure do. Yes. Dante, please come oh, to ICU morning. number one. Are there any late reports on Corbin's condition? Well, I haven't heard anything except that Dr. Dante is hoping that uh, the condition will stabilize. Well, we just saw a headline on the newsstand downstairs that said he was near death. Yes, I know it. I saw that, too, and I don't understand that, except I know Dr. Hardy is terribly upset. There you go. Oh, uh, Barbara, I'll get that one. Uh, if you don't mind watching death oh, for a couple minutes. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Excuse me. You just missed your daughter, Doctor Weber. She just left here a few minutes ago. Laura was in the hospital on a school day. Mm -hmm. I didn't get too much chance to talk to her, though. All I know is she was very anxious to see Monica Weber. Hey, you mind some company? No, I welcome it. Pull up a chair and we'll exchange a little fraternal chit-chat. Uh, I offered company, not conversation. I don't think I'm up to much more than an occasional grunt. A rough day. Mm. I spent all afternoon in surgery. I was looking forward to going home to a hot bath and a nice peaceful evening. When I got out of surgery, I learned that Alan Quartermain scheduled another meeting on the new cardiac wing. Uh -huh. You've been having an awful lot of those meetings lately, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big project. Monica and I are going to be giving up a lot of free time before this is over. How does it feel working so closely with Monica? You know, I... I never thought I'd be saying this, particularly to you. But I think that I detect some signs of change in her. I hope they're all for the good. They are. I think her relationship with Alan Quartermain has had some good effects on her. Well, that puts you in kind of a funny position with him, doesn't it? No, not really. I mean, I keep my relationships with both of them purely professional. I, uh, that's a good rule where Monica's concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, Leslie has asked me a couple of times, why don't I invite you over for dinner? How about it? Uh, you just pick the evening. I'd like that, Rick. All right, name the date. I'll have to check my schedule. And if it's okay with you and with Les, I'd... I'd like to bring Heather along. Sure. I'm worried about her, Rick. Lately, I get the feeling she's sort of... Lost, you know, almost despondent at times. I worry that she's going to take off for parts unknown again. I think a pleasant evening with a real family would mean a lot to her. Okay, whatever you say. Uh, Jeff, is it all right if I express a little brotherly concern? I mean, even if it's none of my business. Yeah, sure. Well, after all that's happened, I really hate to see you getting tangled up with this girl again. I am not getting tangled up. Okay, I'm glad to hear it. 
But we did have a baby together, and we lost him. So I guess each of us will always be a part of the other's life. That's understandable. Another thing. Everything that she's been through, so much of it alone, I think it's changed her, Rick, a lot. But, 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 you have reservations. Maybe you don't love me that way. No, no, that's not it. Well, that's something. What is it? I, I, um, I, I wonder if, uh, if being out here in this remote place hasn't maybe confused in your mind being in love with your determination to do something constructive with your life, which is, after all, the reason why you came up here with me. Hey, is that what you really think? Well, it's possible, isn't it? I mean, we spend an awful lot of time together, and um, there's really nobody else who's been around, and it couldn't have been a more romantic setting, evenings in front of the roaring fire while the snow falls outside. And me falling for you inside? Yeah, I'm trying to be sensible, Rick. I don't want you to make another mistake. Lord knows we've both of us made enough of them already. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You think that I'm proposing to you because the scenery has put ideas in my head or I'm, I'm trying to get back my self-respect? Do you think I'm that stupid or impressionable, Leslie? I didn't say that. Look, I, I don't know what you're saying, but a man doesn't take on a commitment like that because, because he's trying to prove himself because there's an excess, an overabundance of romantic scenery. Some men do. Hey, I'm not some men. I know what I'm doing or else I don't do it. Always? Well, maybe not always, but often enough to lay claim to it. You don't have to get angry about it. Maybe I am getting angry, but... Hey, I'm proposing marriage to you, and you want to quarrel about my motives. I say I love you, and you want to know how come. Well, <laughs> what, what did you expect? Just a quick yes without any thought? I don't know what I expected, but... Why, well, it sure wasn't this. <laughs> Ken, he said that he was very interested in the project and that he could, uh, he could be here within a week. So, that's one stumbling block out of the way. Is he the one we're definitely going with? Not necessarily. Uh, we're going to have to see an initial design of his first. But he's earned a first-rate reputation in England, and uh, by all accounts, he's the best in the business. <laughs> Sounds fine to me. Uh, we'll see. But I promise you, when this wing is built, we aren't going to do it by half measures. We'll incorporate all the latest equipment in the estimates. It'll be the best equipped cardiac center in this part of the country. What about the staff? Oh, I have a list of some of the people that I want to talk to. Uh, you can take a look at it if you want. They're all extremely capable, and I think some of the names on there will be familiar to you. Hopkins? Evans? <laughs> you think you can really get these guys? We can sure try. Well, that's all for now. I'm going to be running along. Oh, you don't have to rush off, Rick. Uh, would you like a drink? No, thank you. I uh, want to get home early this evening. Well, in that case, we won't keep you any longer. Perhaps another time. Sure. I think we're making real progress, Rick, and uh, I appreciate all the time that you've been putting in. Well, it's going to pay off for us all. It's worth it. Good night, Monica. Good Alan. night, Rick. Good night, Rick. <clears throat> we can all have dinner together. Yeah? Where's Laura? She went over to Barbara's for a couple of minutes, but she'll be back in time for dinner. Leslie. You know what you're doing? You're getting more and more permissive every day. If you keep making exceptions for her, she's never going to stick to the rules. Well, this time, I mean, tonight, I had a reason. Sure, you're a soft touch. No. Well, yes. But, I mean, that's not the... Uh... Come over here with me. Okay. And sit down, because I have to talk to you about something that happened today. I went over to Alan's apartment, and I had a big talk with Monica before you got there. I found out today that Monica was the one who gave Laura that first prescription for birth control pills. What? Yeah. So I went over there to see her. And I told her that I'd, I wanted her to stop interfering in Laura's life. I told her that what she had done as a doctor was reprehensible, and if anything like it happened again, I would go to Steve about her. I think she got the message. Well, I don't understand why Monica would involve herself in that, and... Well, how did you find out about it? David told me. 
David Hamilton? Yes. Well, how did he know anything about that? Uh, <laughs> Leslie, I just don't understand. I mean, what's been going on around here? David heard Laura and Scotty talking one day when he was still living here. He told me out of friendship and because he's concerned for her, too. What did Monica say? According to Monica, Laura said that she couldn't talk to me about it, that she was afraid to even mention the subject. But although Monica would never admit it, I believe that she acted out of purely personal reasons with nothing unselfish or helpful about it. The thing that bothers me most is a, is a question of professional ethics involved. She prescribed for Laura without being a gynecologist, without giving her an examination. That's terrible. Well, did you tell Laura that you know about it? Yeah, as soon as I came home. As unpleasant a thing as it is, I feel that maybe some good has come out of it. I think maybe it brought us closer together. Well, I just hope you're right. I know I am. I even told her about the warning I had given Monica. She said she understood. Well, it's hard for me to believe that Monica would want to harm her. And she likes Laura. The important point is that Laura has more than enough to cope with right now. She's obviously trying very hard to go along with the rules. She's trying to make things good between us. The last influence I want in this family right now is Monica. You know, uh, I... Well, what's this all about? I decided to fortify you for what might be a very long meeting with Adam. And Monica, too, of course. Well, I hope it's not going to be too long, but I do uh, appreciate the thought. A cup of tea would be very welcome. There you are. Try one of these cookies. Thank you. I believe I will leave those for my teenage daughter and her sweet tooth. Hmm? Mm. I very much doubt that she's in the mood to join our little... What's this all about? I decided to fortify you for what might be a very long meeting with Adam. And Monica, too, of course. Well, I hope it's not going to be too long, but I do uh, appreciate the thought. Cup of tea would be very welcome. There you are. Thank Try you. one of these cookies. Thank you. I believe I will leave those for my teenage daughter and her sweet tooth. Hmm? Mm. I very much doubt that she's in the mood to join our little tea party. Well, I'm afraid I've been a little bit preoccupied today with my notes to uh, pay much attention to what's going on around here. Is there another problem? I don't know whether it's Scotty or what it is. At one minute she can be sweet, cooperative, pleasant. And then suddenly, she gets very quiet. And I can tell she's depressed, but she doesn't want to talk about it, and she just stays in her room the way she did this afternoon. Uh-huh. Are, uh, are you asking my opinion? Yes, of course I am. Okay, then I have to say we made the rules, and we have to stick by them. I mean, if Laura hadn't been so secretive about whatever was going on with Scotty, we wouldn't have needed the new rules. And believe me, honey, she'll come around once she's had time to get used to the discipline. I certainly hope so. Mm -hmm. Makes me miserable to see her drifting around the house wrapped in gloom. Well, my tea leaves say it won't last. <laughs> Is it time for you to leave? Mm-hmm. Oh. No, no. Try to make it as short as I can. Well, what shall I do about dinner? Oh, well, don't wait for me. I'll tell you what, if you're really worried about Laura's droopy spirits, why don't you take her out to dinner tonight? That's a terrific idea go to dinner with you, why don't you leave me a note? If the meeting breaks up early enough, maybe I can meet the two of you for coffee and dessert at least. Oh, okay. Hopefully by dessert she'll be in a better frame of mind. Yeah, good luck. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have fun. Thank you.